So let's enter the Huawei booth and let's check out some of the latest things they've been talking about. Something that I think is quite exciting is the smart AI and codex and the deployment of the 5G network for people who do live streaming and for people who watch video on the internet. It's a huge challenge to get high quality, at least 1080p experience to everybody. In China, there's a billion people watching live streams and her live stream is being optimized so the highest quality, no matter where she is and where she's streaming from, TikTok is communicating with the network provider to optimize the 5G connectivity in every region of every city, depending on how much usage there is. If there's a lot of people watching, this is how they downstream, they upstale the, the quality, uh, so it looks at least like 1080p even if there's thousands and thousands of people watching at the same time, even if there's something very popular and even in the corner of a city, they optimize the, the number of band, um, base bands to have the best ex uh, experience, 27% more traffic. And it's over 5G, now it's on the cloud. Yeah. This is a cloud phone. Yeah, this is on cloud phone. So on the cloud phone, you can see the same screen, the same environment like the physical phone. You can see this one is a physical phone. Physical phone, when we install one uh, game application, is more than 20, 20 gigabytes. It's yeah. a big one. So you install here, when you play, you say that reaction is very slow. Slow. Yeah. Okay? It's slow. And this okay. one is uh, it's on the cloud. Yeah. Okay, we install this, the same game on the cloud phone. So you can see the reaction is very quick. It's very quick. Zero GB. Yeah. So like a real-time experience. It's like you have a big computer, a big cloud computer. Yeah, for yeah, because you're using the cloud computing. All right. I can download one B, 2 GB, 2 GB uh, game, right? You can see the time. Wow. It's around the 10 seconds. Very it's, quick. Just like a dream. Yeah. You're very directly quick, in the cloud. Very quick. Yeah. Now it's insta installing. So I'm walking here at the U Garden and there's flying whales with the rabbits and it's flying all over us in this historical U Garden with those uh, beautiful buildings around here and it's an AR and it's helping me maybe go around here to find the best restaurant because I'm a hungry so I will look for the AR experience uh, it's going to be powered by 5G and everything in the future. And it just downloads when you WeChat. You download it here. You can follow the whale. I'm a little bit a whale, you know, so I, I like following the whale. And the whale tells me maybe I should consider this restaurant or uh, some of these things that happen here during the... And uh, then we can just c continue walking around in AR. Europe should embrace competition, should invite the best of China, the best of the US, the best of Europe to compete on features, on price, to bring the best technology to the market. There's no need to limit yourself to not use Chinese technology because then everything is going to be more expensive. When you connect to the internet, it's going to be worse and it's going to be higher price. There's no point in that. There's all these promises of 5G that can maybe realize the Internet of Things in new ways that were just thought of before. Now, potentially, you can bring more connectivity to way more devices all over the, the, the planet. This is a huge news. This is very important. It also connects to satellites. It also brings new users for smart AI, for potentially robots, for self-driving cars, all these things. We want better quality we want lower price so enable competition and stop limiting the competition that's what I think European countries should do and they should talk with Huawei and if they have any concerns discuss it ask maybe to look at the source code whatever you want to do just embrace technology embrace competition this is the best way forward for the last 20 years I've been talk talking about on my YouTube channel of all the competition that's on the market all the different uh, supplier, all the different innovators, inventors, and in China, Huawei works really hard to try to bring the latest and the best. So this is what I think. Don't limit yourself. Enable competition. Embrace competition. Thanks for watching.
So Huawei is launching this very interesting AI-based uh, weather forecasting model. Uh, it's a free product. You can find it on the internet. It's called Pengu Weather. Uh, it's linked on this website of the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. And there's a Nature article where uh, Huawei claims to be 10,000 times faster than the IFS, which is kind of like a global standard for weather forecasting. It's using all kinds of AI prediction models, some of the cutting edge AI prediction models that uh, uh, Huawei has been uh, suggesting would be the most optimal to predict the weather. So you get like 10 days into the future and you can see uh, at the different air pressure um, levels and you can go to, for example, uh, North America and you can see that you know all the hot areas here there's um it says high 30 degrees celsius uh, when you go like here and then it develops like that there's like tracking for the impending uh hurricane you can see you can see the the hurricane is moving this way here it might uh, impact canada and so um, the expert should check it out. It's free. I will put the link and you can check out whether the prediction correct or not. It's like the experts can try to analyze the prediction with the reality 10 days into the future and then uh, uh, choose any of the, the global um, regions. You can check even the North Pole, how it's going up there if you want. And uh, it just loads looking like this. Uh, the temperature on the North Pole is around minus 8 or something like that. Uh, and yeah, there it is. Try to understand what AI models they've been using. So it's, it's fully open. People can check it out. And it's just very important for many industries, uh, for the whole planet actually, to understand what's the weather going to be because that changes everything in terms of how we can uh, manage. You see, even in the future, down all this area here is going to be in the in the 40s, it's still going to be hot, according to this AI, uh, towards even the end of September, even towards the 40-something degrees. And if we take, if you go to Africa, And then you can you can see what will happen. I'm not sure how that can predict also uh, the rain because the rain is difficult, I guess, to to predict uh, because you never know. But uh, in terms of temperatures and maybe the currents and stuff like that, you can see towards the end of September it's going to get qu quite hot all over Africa. In the in the in the 40s nearly in the high 30s celsius all right thanks for watching